All right, welcome everybody. Chris Petri here, thanks so much for coming by. We're gonna have a beautiful time painting a gorgeous floral arrangement here we found online. So basically, your, tele, your, your cell phone, your iPad, your computer, um, tons of information on there you can use um, to create paintings, and that's what we're gonna do on this video. So we're gonna actually uh, explain from the very beginning how we found a, a beautiful photograph to work from. We put it onto our phone. We um, started out with a preliminary sketch. You'll see how we do a very, very light sketch first to make sure we get our flower arrangement filling up our space of our rectangle here that we have drawn in. Once we do that, then we do our contour drawing, which is our final drawing where we get more details of our flowers that we're going to do here, our lilies and roses and some other uh, beautiful green uh, fla uh, sh shapes of leaf forms. and. Um, just an absolute fun time doing the contour drawing. We explain everything on your contour drawing, how you get that all going and working throughout your picture space. And then finally we're going to uh, start out and get um, our painting going and mixing our colors. We're going to show you how to mix all your colors, what colors to use exactly. We name each color as we go so that there's no confusion. I mix it all out here on our uh, palette, <clears throat> nice and simple, so you can see all the mixtures that we're going to use. Um, and then uh, again, we're working from a um, photograph here on our phone, and I'll explain how you can get some more interesting, um, uh, I guess more of an interesting look with your flower painting by kind of leaving some airspace in there with some white paper here and there versus just trying to block it all in with color. So we kind of explain here all the details and the subtleties of watercolor painting so you can kind of get the feel for it, and then you'll be able to um, interpret your. Um, paintings that you're doing from whatever you're using, whether it's from real life bouquets of flowers or if you're looking up some flowers online and using photographs, however you like to work, you'll be able to kind of add your own flair and excitement to your watercolor paintings by kind of just using some of the techniques and methods that we talk about here on the uh, this tutorial. So this is a beautiful um, tutorial for flower painting, getting used to the colors, the way we draw and lay out our painting and uh, finally how we just go through the painting mixing our colors and getting everything in in a real uh, quick direct fashion fresh and loose uh, and not too many of uh, uh, not too much fussing around and I guess getting overworked with details and things like that we kind of got this done pretty pretty quickly you know so within an hour plus or minus you're gonna have your painting done okay we'll see you in just a few minutes Okay, so we're getting started again here. We just saw the finished uh, painting, of course, and uh, we're gonna, again, we're, we're doing this work uh, from a photograph on our uh, cell phone. So a lot of people I know like to work from their cell phones, their iPads, their computers, um, actual physical photographs. Sometimes I know uh, some of you have written in and, let, and told me that you like to take older photographs that you might have in shoe boxes and things and use some of those for your reference photos from vacations and it's all good. Whatever you want to use for your reference uh, material, that's just great. You know, I sometimes use my uh, panel TV so that I can have a larger scene that I can kind of draw from and paint from. So, I'll, you know, my panel TV is maybe like a four foot panel TV. Um, so it's a good size. Um, TV I have in my studio. I use it um, for my artwork, so I felt it was justified to purchase it, and it, it's really it's really great. Um, I use it again for you know uh, pulling up pictures of uh, artwork and photographs of places and all kinds of good things. I can sometimes take a photograph of something on my cell phone and save it to my computer, and then I plug my computer into my TV, and then I can have like vacation pictures on my large screen TV to work from. So you can work from anything you like, but I thought this was a good, simple bouquet of flowers just on, on our cell phone here, a simple kind of um, way to um, create some beautiful artwork here. And um, so we're gonna do this and let's start out by kind of making the decision. Well, let's get a, um, I'm gonna make a rectangle with my pencil here. We want to have a border whenever we're working. It's always good that you have a border 
um, around your drawing and painting so that you have a definite, uh, definitive um, space that you're working within. And then from there you can work everything else into that rectangle, that space that you've created. And then here, uh, I'm going to say let's start about here with our vase, pretty low in the picture frame here. So we'll start with our vase here, just I'm making a, um, a reference uh, sketch line just to get the bottom of the vase. It's a little more round than that, so I'm going to do that. And then I think from there, once I kind of get the bottom of my vase, the next thing I want to do is say, okay, this is the bottom of my vase. Let me start s very lightly sketching out the, the flower arrangement um, in this rectangle in a super light fashion with my pencil lines just so I can kind of get the feel for where it's all going to be and then once I have that really super light line, pencil line outline then I can go in and do my finished drawing and then we can paint after that. So let's try our preliminary sketch first and kind of go from there so I'm going to do a very light sketch like so and then I see there's some So I'm going to, I'm not going to do every bit of detail, but I am going to start out with some detail. And And you can see I'm just getting some real rough ideas of where things are going to be. And other than that, I, I just want to make sure I'm not making something looking lopsided where I'm drawing too much information on one side of this rectangle over here and then all of a sudden I have all this empty space over here. So I'm just looking back and forth as I do my sketching here just to make sure that I have that I have plenty of um, subject matter and I think that looks pretty good. So we have the vase. <clears throat> the only thing I notice is my vase might be a little bit uh, on an angle. So let me let me just that so that's much better and then here inside the vase I have some water and there's plenty of stems and things like that so I'm just gonna and I think that's about all we need right here just that outline in a, in a super light fashion and you can see how I just started on my vase down here on the table and we're gonna make a a line on our table so we don't want this vase just floating off in space. It kind of looks like it's floating around in space right now in this picture. So that's why I'm going to put a table, a line behind it, like a table. So we might have a table here behind. It's setting, resting upon a table. I think that looks better. And uh, I think our light is, um, our light is shining on the, <clears throat> on the uh, vase this way. So it's coming from the front area. So I put my light insignia up here, like so. And I think that's good. So now that we have our preliminary sketch done, and we've pretty much filled our rectangle with plenty of subject matter, we took our vase and our flower arrangement and just said, let's really make that the real strong, dominant um, theme of, of this painting. You know, we can do different things. If we had, let's say, some fruit and a bowl and maybe a teacup and things like that, we could make this smaller 
make the flower arrangement smaller and then add more subject matter to this to make it more of like let's say a still life but but for this painting we're going to actually just stick with our photograph our photograph is very clear it's a flower arrangement that's exciting we fill our rectangle up with that exciting floral arrangement here with this beautiful clear crystal clear vase and that's all we need to really do so we're going to come back in a second i'm going to take a quick break and then we'll uh, do some more uh, detailed drawing so the thing i wanted to just mention is i did do a preliminary sketch as you can see it's very light i'm thinking you can definitely see that i'm looking in my camera right now and i can tell that you can see the light pencil lines just so that we got that situated and then we'll come back and we'll we'll do the um, contour drawing next which is our final drawing of the flower arrangement here and vase on the table okay so we'll be right back okay so we are getting back here and we're going to do our contour drawing so I'm going to start pretty much the same place we started before uh, with the bottom of the vase so I'm just going to start contour drawing here and I'm going to keep my eye going back and forth from the uh, floral ar arrangement here on my phone back and forth I just keep looking back and forth and s just dr drawing what I'm seeing and Okay, and then I'm going to come back over this way. I want to stay over here on the right-hand side. Okay, that's a lily flower, and I'm going to try to get in that little bit of shade in there. And we'll paint in a lot of the details. So remember when you're doing your contour drawing, you're going to paint in most of your details. You're not really, your drawing is just to try to get a good representation of what you're seeing here, but not a lot of detail. You want to kind of minimize. You don't really want much detail, actually because you're going to paint in a lot of the details. So you can kind of see I'm not really going for much detail here. I'm just trying to get some of the... There's some... There's a pink flower there. And of course I want to... There's a yellow rose there, so I want to make sure I get that. So I'm going to do that. I make a, make a rose type shape there with some petals. And again, I don't have to do too much detail. I just want to, then I'm going to do some of these other shapes here. And again, I'm not going to um, get too worried about every single thing I'm seeing. I'm just, I see another yellow rose over here. So I'm going to capture that. There's plenty of petals within that rose there and then it it's okay and then we already and if you already have some things drawn in that you drew on your preliminary sketch you can by all rights just go over that same pencil line that you had there before. If you need to adjust it a little bit of course do that but it might be good enough and you don't need to. You just go over it with a darker line just so you you re-acknowledge that you've drawn that line correctly and that leaf or that shape correctly and then you just keep moving forward from there and before you know it you're pretty much you have most of the information you need and again this type of um, pencil drawing the contour drawing we're doing it's really um, you're trying to get a fair amount of information but definitely not everything and you want to leave out most of the details you just want to kind of get a, de a fair amount of details let's say but not everything and as long as you in your mind are looking at the scene and saying oh yeah I can I can handle most of this with my paints and my brushes then you're really ahead of the game because you want to have fun 
with your paints and your colors and your washes and you don't want to be uh, you know struggling over trying to do all kinds of um, intricate details with your brush so I think that's good enough I think I've got enough details in here where I can kind of see the main um, So I have the lily over here, which is a light pink and dark pink lily here. And then um, lots of green leaves and things uh, at the bottom of the vase here. We do have to get, let's do some of our, definitely want to do some of these, the um, stems of the flowers in this bottom of the vase. So we definitely want to do that. So I'm just getting in some of those. And I think if I just do a few like that, that should be good enough. And I also notice that I just put a little more of a base on the, the vase, the glass vase here. And there's a little bit of water in there, so maybe I just put a little water line in there maybe and I shade in a little of the areas that are the green leaves, so I remember to, that's going to be green leaves here. And again, I think that's good, so that's our contour drawing. Um, and now we can uh, take another quick break, and then once we rest up for 5-10 minutes, we'll come back and we'll start painting. And I always mention too, if it's your first time here, welcome and thanks so much for coming by. Um, we do great paintings just like this. Every week we're doing flowers, some weeks we're doing boats, another week we're doing figure painting, another week we might be doing a gorgeous uh, landscape scene. So we do everything watercolor and that's the main thing here. As long as you're um, following along, you'll be learning all the basic techniques of watercolor. No matter what we're painting and drawing, you're always going to be learning all the fundamentals of watercolor painting and drawing. So drawing and painting and watercolor, we cover everything here with that. And um, no matter what we're going to be doing as far as subject matter, you might like flowers and you're really tuned in on this uh, video. And then maybe next week if we're doing something like boats and you, you're not too, you know, pleased with boats and you really don't like them that much, that's fine. You can wait, uh, you know, to the next video or you can go back in the archives. I have really hundreds of uh, uh, flower paintings in my uh, archives on YouTube. So never feel like you don't have any information to work from. You can always go back into the archives on my channel, look up some of my older videos. They're actually, a, it's a great resource. Uh, I've been on YouTube for more than five years now, so you can imagine I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stockpile videos that you can go back and just look through to your heart's content. So don't worry about it. If I don't have something one week that, you know, um, one week, you can always go back into my archives and find plenty of what you want. Just type in my name and the subject matter you like. So you just might type in Chris Petri flowers. And when you type in that into YouTube, you'll see probably 50 videos with all my flower videos. Or if you want to see more boats and we're not doing one next week of boats, you can just type in Chris Petri boats and you'll see probably another 100 videos or 75 videos of boat paintings that I've done and tutorials and you'll have a great time so never feel like you don't have anything to work on go in and work to your heart's content again and have fun with it enjoy it do excerpts of what I do you don't have to do everything the same way I do it you're the artist you come up with your own creative ways of painting and drawing and um, the way you work from my videos you might like to do just small parts of what I'm doing instead of trying to do the whole painting sometimes if I'm doing a large painting you can always do a small portion of it and just get familiar with the, the, you know, the pencil lines and the drawing and the paints and the brushwork. All of that takes time, so don't get stressed either. Watercolor takes time, so if you are new, um, don't worry. We also have our Extreme Beginners series, um, which is, if you just type in Extreme Beginners with my name, Chris Petri, you'll see that we have about 
we have we've been doing this six months now doing extreme beginners videos and you'll just see that it's much more of a simple format for painting and drawing and watercolor and I use a little more inexpensive art materials because if you're just beginning you might not want to be spending you know a lot of money on fancy pencils and brushes and paints and all that you can start out with a real simple setup that's only going to cost you very little and you'll be off and going and practicing up on your watercolors and then at a later time you can invest more money if you want to on your art supplies and, and so forth but <clears throat> let's come right back in a second and we'll start painting and again uh, thanks for coming by and we'll get back painting in just a second okay so we're getting started with our painting portion <clears throat> the main thing here I want to um, impress is we're going to do the a la prima method of painting right now. A la prima, we're just painting everything at one time. We're not doing really the glazing technique, which is really, I usually, you'll always hear me talk about two main techniques, the glazing technique or the a la prima technique. So basically, um, I would say um, I probably use them both about the same amount. Um, so... Um, on this one, we're going to use the alla prima technique, and you'll just see that <clears throat> we're going to uh, just uh, we're going to get out some greens, some with some burnt sienna, so uh, sap green and and burnt sienna to get ourselves a nice like mixture of a green with a little bit of that burnt sienna, that reddish. Um, color, we're going to try to create uh, maybe uh, some French ultramarine blue with some green too to get us more of a cool green and a warmer green there. So we'll start off with our greens um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. But let's try to keep this and let's also go for a nice fresh green. Uh, cadmium lemon yellow with a little bit of sap green, maybe a little bit of uh, olive green too. Olive green and so we're going to have a nice fresh green. So let's go with a more of a fresh green here, like so. So that's my first. My first bit of uh, paint is going to be these kind of fresh looking greens, the lighter greens, and then I'll maybe work in some of the darker greens like this, and then we'll start to get a a good mix of our greens warm and cool greens and I'm using a Raphael number six round brush watercolor brush natural hair okay and it starts to get a little darker in here, some shadowing underneath this iris, and, and you can see I'm just placing my paint and then I always like to have a tissue on hand that I hold. I rinse off my brush, I dry off a little bit of water off my brush, and then I can kind of use a damp brush to sort of mix the paint around a little bit and kind of get things smooth you know smooth out my washes a little bit and get things looking good um we're gonna go with some let's go right in and start getting some of those stems in too let's kind of start thinking of attaching attaching our if you see maybe you want to lift up sometimes a little bit of paint and then we're going to go back in and get some and then maybe some cobalt blue and cerulean blue over here just to kind of get ourselves a little bit of a lighter blue trying to just get some stems started in my vase here because 
before too long. I don't want to wait too long for those stems. I want to start doing those now. This way the water can flow around in those uh, stems from up above here. That's a good kind of uh, look to have is some water color paints flowing around and mixing and mingling on the paper. So let's continue on here. Sap green. And then so already we have some good darks and that's what I think we we should do here is let's get some really good darks in our painting. That's easy to kind of work in a painting that you already established some darks so that's what I'm doing. Try to get some of those really good darks in the painting first. And once we have those everything else seems to work out well. So I'm, in a sense, negative shape painting here a little bit. I'm painting around this uh, pink and reddish iris. And then I rinse off the brush, dry off the paint, and I'm making a little bit of a lighter green leaf there that we have, and some more over here. And I might loosen things up and just do a couple splashes over here and there. And then <clears throat> we're going to start um, mixing in some alizarin crimson and rose matter. So, and while I'm doing that, let me just add some of that. Alizarin crimson and rose matter to some of the other portions of the painting and then I just soften those little bits of red into the uh, washes here and there just so we have a little bit of that uh, alizarin crimson and rose matter mixing around on other parts of the painting and not just in one section that wouldn't look good. We try to always mix the same colors throughout the whole painting to give a nice harmony and again here we have some yellow roses and let's take some of that yellow rose color and let's mix that in a little bit too. If we can get a little bit of that yellow so there we have our yellow rose which is cadmium yellow so I'm going to and there's more yellow, there's another yellow rose over here so I'm gonna start to get those beautiful golden yellow rose colors in there like so and there's another bit of yellow over here <clears throat> and I'm moving through this pretty good you can see I'm not really taking painstaking efforts to make everything perfect let me just try to get the main idea of what I'm seeing here so here we have the um, the iris and there's a dark bit of red there so right there you can kind of see that darker shade of red let's get that in and there's some purple in that too so we're going to get some purple which is ultramarine violet and, and uh, put some of that darker ultramarine violet in there and then we let that kind of just set you know set up a little bit and start to dry a little bit we rinse off our brush and then maybe we can start to just have a tiny little bit of color there and then the same thing over here we notice we have some more of that alizarin crimson and rose matter with a little bit of purple and we want to start to mix that around, kind of lighten it up by dr rinsing the brush off, drying off a little bit of the water, and then we just kind of soften that alizarin crimson and rose matter wash. Just lighten that up a little bit, keep it dark in here. If you have to go back and get a little more, charge some more dark in there, get some more paint out on the palette if you need to 
alizarin crimson, rose matter, a little bit of purple, and then you know you can get a little more darker. Wash in there like so. And then the same thing here. Let's then I just use the damp brush. There's a little bit of green in there too. And put that green, light green wash in the center of the flower. And then we can continue on and let's get this. And then a damp brush. Rinse off the water. Rinse off the brush. Dry off a little bit of the water on the tissue so you don't have too much water on there. On the brush and then you can just gently soften out that like that and there's some more like that and there's one more petal over here looks like there's And again, I rinse off the brush, dry off the brush on the paper towel or tissue or sponge, whatever you have. Your apron, you can use an apron. Um, and that looks pretty good. And you can always go back in later and add more darker wash like this. But I think that looks pretty good. And then we'll go back in and start to do some more greens up here. There's some more greens over here. And I'll just splash a few um, leave some lights here and there. Don't fill everything in. I always mention that. Try not to fill everything in. So now we're going to do some of these round shapes. They're a little darker underneath so you can get a little darker wash underneath there like that. Some darker I'm going to do a couple splashes up here and there's some more um, alizarin crimson over here. There's a So I'm trying to do a little bit of a, a flower shape up here that I see. And then I'll get another tissue if I see it's starting to <clears throat> infringe on another flower petal. I just lift it up so it doesn't start to infiltrate into that flower petal over here, that lily flower uh, petal. <clears throat> and then we can continue on here and just continue with our... Uh, I see that we have plenty of really light green fresh kind of greens up here so let's let's do those and again I'm not going to get too worried about every uh, detail I'm gonna try to there's a little bit of orange with some of these there's a little bit of orange mixed in with that cadmium yellow for our roses so there's a little more a bit of a darker dark there I noticed over here too like that And there's some more the 
There's some dark darks in here, in the center of the... in the center of the flowers. Underneath here, I noticed there's a little bit of... But I don't want to fill in everything here. I'm going to kind of leave some white paper in there. I don't want to fill in everything and make it just like a giant... It, it kind of... That's the thing where um, we'll come back in a few seconds. We're going to take a break. Um, I always mention too at this point in the video, hey, if you really like this video and you're learning a lot, please subscribe right on the right hand side below the screen. There's that subscribe button. If you click subscribe, it just means that each time you open up uh, YouTube, the next time you're coming to watch YouTube uh, videos with artwork and watercolor paintings and things like that, you'll see my videos um, at the top of your list. Because if you're following me and you really like my channel a lot, when you subscribe, that just means that YouTube will kind of put my videos first in your queue. So you'll be able to see my videos first and see what I'm doing and working on, and then you can go from there. So that's just always a good, helpful thing to know. And then we're going to, again, we're going to continue on. But I guess the main point I just wanted to mention was when you see a photograph like this and you're painting from something like this, like we're doing here, I am taking some artist liberty by adjusting it a little bit. So if we painted it exactly like you're seeing it right here, um, uh, you wouldn't see as many lights like this, right? Because you can kind of see mostly everything is really jam-packed full of dark colors in here. But I want to leave lights. I want to leave some white paper inside the center of my bouquet and my vase and my flowers so um, that's where I would take a little bit of liberty and say as you're if you're you're the artist see if you like it better when you're painting a, a vase of flowers or doing a flower arrangement with watercolor painting see if it looks a little better if you leave some airspace in there and leave some white paper so that maybe you it'll feel a little more three-dimensional and have a little more air to it a little more feeling like you can kind of see through it a little bit there's some light shining through the back of the, the flower arrangement this to me seems it's a beautiful flower arrangement no I don't doubt that in the least but for a watercolor painting if you want to transition this look to a watercolor painting you might have that really good um, idea in your mind of well how can I make it a little bit better than what I'm seeing here and that's how I feel we can make this a little better by just leaving some white paper in between some of the flowers and some of the greens and leaves and forms within this um, flower arrangement that we're drawing and painting in watercolor. So I'm hoping you'll um, just as an artist think in your mind um, how it looks. Maybe try one with no white paper and just paint it just like you're seeing it and then try another one with some more white um, paper uh, left inside the center of your flower arrangement uh, on your watercolor painting and see how that looks. I think you might be surprised that it's going to look really, really good. It'll give you a little more a feeling of um, just, uh, you know, air and lightness to it. Okay. All right. So we're going to come right back. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to finish up. I think we pretty much have most of everything done here. We'll, we'll try to keep this, um, you know, pretty uh, straightforward and not get too um, busy with too many details that might ruin it. Let's keep it light, fresh, and kind of, um, you know, leave it underdone a little bit. Let's leave our paintings a little bit underdone. We can always go back a, a week or two later and put some extra information in there, but to leave it underdone is maybe a little better. Okay, all right, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, just a quick informational. I'm really excited. I've been invited to the Thousand Island Arts Center to teach a uh, workshop this summer. It's uh, August 9th, 10th, and 11th, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's a daytime workshop, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're going to have an absolutely fantastic time. I'm going to put up the itinerary in just a second, too, as well. But I wanted you to have the Thousand Island Arts Center phone number so you can call to register. Or you can also register online. That's up to you. Uh, their phone number is 315-686-4123. Again, their phone number is 315-686-4123. Or you can also um, register and look up all the information online at TIA. R-T-S-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org. Again, their website is T-I-A-R-T-S-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org. 
Um, I th I'll put the itinerary up here so you can just, I'll scroll it. I'm not going to read it. I'll just kind of scroll it up so you can kind of see the class description. And you can look this up online too. I encourage everybody to look um, for the um, brochure. If you go to the website, you'll see a brochure button. You click on that brochure button, you'll see my course, as well as other courses if you can't happen to make these dates, but you still want to take a watercolor class or watercolor course and workshop. And uh, there's also an online course for watercolor artists. So if you're interested in doing online uh, watercolor courses, they have those as well. That's something you was really, this is a great resource, everyone, for your, for your watercolor art. I know some of you mentioned that you wanted to um, do, wanted to inquire about online art and watercolor painting classes. I, um, I'm not doing them right now. I'm really looking forward to maybe in the future doing some online courses, but right now I'm just not, um, not geared up for that right now. So they have them though for those that want to do online courses. But just a great resource and beautiful historic area, beautiful scenery, water and boats everywhere, beautiful architecture, shopping, there's uh, museums. So that's the itinerary. And um, I hope you'll all make it out to the workshop. And again, we're going to have a great time, tons of fun drawing and painting and watercolor. So I hope to see you there. And um, let's get back to our watercolor painting. All right, we're getting uh, started again. And uh, we're going to finish up now. I think we have a really good feel for this uh, bouquet of flowers. Let's... Uh, continue on here. I think we need some uh, more greens, uh, sap green and uh, French ultramarine blue. And I'm going to rinse off my brush and I'm going to also empty my water. I like to empty my water numerous times when I'm doing um, paintings to get fresh clean water. This way I have, um, I can, I can really work on lighter washes and it won't be contaminated with a lot of um, mixtures of colors. So um, I'm going to go with some uh, olive green and cadmium lemon yellow. And I'm going to do a little bit of these over here, like so. Okay, there's some leaf forms here and there. Maybe there's some darker darks over here. Then maybe over here it's lighter. And again, maybe we're leaving some... We're leaving some uh, white paper. Leave white paper. You can always go back in and add some colors t to your white paper if you find it's too much that you've left. What, you know, without paint on it, but I'm going to take some cerulean blue and do a couple sp spots of cerulean blue and then take that and just maybe blend it out a little bit into the background of the painting so that we have a little bit of blue in there, kind of that nice fresh light blue here and there, but I want to leave lots of white paper and, um, Let's continue here. I think there's a few more. Um, I'm going to go with some straight alizarin crimson here. And I thought I would just maybe add a little bit of the alizarin crimson just to have a little more of that vibrant red. And 
There's some more darks in here, I think. And some greens, light greens. Like that. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay, and then I might add a little bit of cobalt blue for some of that water feeling here. So I'm going to take some cobalt blue and maybe create a little bit of that water feeling there. And then some green down here. There's a little bit of shadowing over here. And then maybe some more cobalt blue over here. So I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow back here where the table, table is. Just a little bit of a shadow there. Okay, I think that's good. A little bit of shadow by the back edge of that table, just so it you know, shows shows that we do have a, a backdrop here a little bit. And maybe a little more blue over here. And a little more cobalt blue. And then maybe I'll add a little cobalt blue there, just to have a little bit of interesting color there. And maybe I'll do the same thing, just a little bit of color up here. And I think we're we're going to use our needlepoint brush now. We'll get in some stems, so we'll take some um, burnt sienna sap green, a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue, and let's do a couple stems. Here we have a couple stems. Let's get in just a couple stems here and there. We want to add some interesting shapes of stems. A little bit here and there within the arrangement to the center, maybe a couple of something like that, just a little bit. Kind of just piques the curiosity of someone looking at the painting with a few stems and things like that. Some more additional details. And I think that's it. I think we have a finished painting. Again, you can always go back in later, but try to underfinish your paintings. I think you'll be very satisfied to kind of leave your paintings a little bit underdone. And you can kind of see that 
we just, you know, worked with what we had. We have a beautiful photograph of this uh, flower arrangement here, and that's all we needed was just to really key in on what we're seeing here, but then take it to another level with our artistic knowledge and say, yeah, we don't want to fill in every detail here when we're painting. We want to leave some, you know, airspace in there with some white paper, and uh, we want to maybe leave some highlights of white paper on the roses. You can see I left some highlights on the petals of the roses and some highlights on the, the lily flower here, the light pink lily. And we did some really fresh light greens with some of our cadmium lemon colors, right? You know, we didn't make everything one dark sap green color. We mixed sap green and mixtures of colors within the sap green. We added some burnt sienna, some, uh, you know, um, we added... I, I think it was, yeah, we added burnt sienna and some burnt umber and some French ultramarine blue to our green, our sap green, to give it some more interesting uh, uh, color va uh, variations. Okay, so I hope you'll enjoy this and try this. And, you know, there's uh, just endless amounts of flower arrangements online you can look up on the Internet and just, you know, you can paint and draw uh, flower paintings, you know, um, as many as you like, and you can just practice on them and... Each time you're going to have more fun, it'll be a little easier, and you just keep kind of practicing those techniques, techniques and methods that we show here of um, mixing lots of colors, trying to avoid that um, using just one color or two colors in your painting. That'll really take your artwork to a whole, whole other level if you can just remember to do lots of mixes of colors. You know, you might have three reds here, you know, alizarin, crimson, rose matter, and uh, a little bit of cadmium red, let's say. You can mix up your reds and use three reds instead of just one. Same thing with your greens. When you're using greens, you can mix your sap green, olive green you can use. You can mix in some French ultramarine blue with your greens to make a darker, more cooler green. Or you can add cadmium lemon yellow with a little bit of sap green to make a real light, fresh looking green. So it's up to you. Have fun with it. And uh, we're going to see you on the next video. And um, happy painting for now. Bye-bye.